Imagine a universe where, if the sun suddenly winked out of existence, Earth would instantly fly off into the cold, dark void. For centuries, that's precisely how we understood gravity, an invisible, instantaneous pull across vast cosmic distances. But what if gravity isn't instant? What if it too has a speed limit? Today, we're diving into one of the most fundamental forces in the universe, exploring not just how fast it travels, but the mind-bending reason why it works at all. For over two centuries, Sir Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation reigned supreme. Newton gave us the elegant mathematical framework to describe how every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. It explained everything from falling apples to the majestic dance of planets around the sun. Newton's gravity was a work of genius, allowing us to predict celestial mechanics with incredible accuracy. But embedded within Newton's brilliant equations was a silent, unstated assumption that gravity acts instantaneously. Change a mass somewhere, and its gravitational influence would be felt everywhere, instantly. This idea, often called action at a distance, always left a slight philosophical unease among physicists. How could information about a mass's presence or movement travel infinitely fast? It defied intuition, but for a long time there was no way to challenge it. Then came Albert Einstein. In 1915, his general theory of relativity completely revolutionized our understanding of gravity. Forget the invisible force. Einstein proposed something far more profound. Gravity isn't a force at all. Instead, it's a manifestation of the curvature of space-time caused by the presence of mass and energy. Imagine our universe as a giant, flexible fabric called space-time. When you place a massive object, like a star or a planet, onto this fabric, it creates a dent or a curve. Smaller objects, instead of being pulled by a mysterious force, simply follow the curves in this space-time fabric. It's like a marble rolling towards a bowling ball on a trampoline. It's not being pulled, but simply following the distorted landscape. This wasn't just a new description, it was a fundamentally different way to conceive of reality. A key prediction of Einstein's theory was that if a massive object moved or changed, the ripples in space-time, what we now call gravitational waves, would propagate outwards much like ripples in a pond after a stone is dropped. And here's the crucial part. General relativity predicted these gravitational waves would travel at a finite speed, the universe's ultimate speed limit, the speed of light. This was a bold claim directly contradicting Newton's instantaneous gravity. But how could we possibly measure something so subtle? Now, this is where things get truly profound. Einstein's general relativity gives us the mathematical tools to describe how mass and energy curve space-time. It tells us that the distribution of mass and energy dictates the geometry of space-time, and that geometry, in turn, tells mass and energy how to move. It's an elegant, self-consistent loop. But why does mass have this innate property of bending space-time? Why is the very fabric of reality responsive to the presence of energy? This question takes us to the very edge of our current scientific understanding. General relativity is an incredibly successful theory, but it doesn't explain the fundamental reason for this connection. It simply postulates it as a core principle. Physicists are still searching for a deeper, more fundamental theory that could answer this why. This is the realm of quantum gravity, attempts to unify general relativity, which describes gravity on large scales, with quantum mechanics, which describes the universe at its smallest scales. Theories like string theory or loop quantum gravity are bravely trying to bridge this gap, to uncover the ultimate nature of space-time and its intimate relationship with matter and energy. Until then, while we know how it happens with incredible precision, the deepest why remains one of the universe's most enduring mysteries. 
For decades, direct measurement of speed of gravity seemed impossible. But the first profound hint came not from direct detection, but from the elegant dance of cosmic clocks. Enter the binary pulsar. In 1974, astronomers Russell Hulse and Joseph Taylor discovered PSR B1913 plus 16 a system consisting of two incredibly dense neutron stars orbiting each other, one of which is a pulsar, a rapidly rotating neutron star that emits precise regular beams of radio waves, like a cosmic lighthouse. These pulsars act as extraordinarily accurate clocks. By meticulously timing their pulses, Hills and Taylor could precisely track the orbital dynamics of this binary system. Einstein's theory predicted that as these two massive stars orbited, they would continuously emit gravitational waves, slowly draining energy from their orbit. This energy loss should cause the stars to spiral inward, and their orbital period would gradually shorten. And that's exactly what they found. Over years of observation, the orbital period of the pulsars was decaying at precisely the rate predicted by general relativity. This remarkable agreement assuming gravitational waves were carrying away energy at the speed of light, provided powerful uh, indirect evidence for the existence of gravitational waves and their speed. For this groundbreaking work, Hulse and Taylor were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1993. It was a stunning triumph for Einstein, but the direct detection of these elusive ripples remained the ultimate goal. The ultimate verification of gravity's speed, however, came nearly a century after Einstein's prediction. The heroes of this story are monumental scientific collaborations. The LIGO, Laser Interferometer, Gravitational Wave Observatory, and Virgo collaborations. These aren't your typical telescopes. They are colossal L-shaped interferometers, each arm stretching several kilometers long, designed to detect infinitesimal ripples in space-time. When a gravitational wave passes, it minutely stretches and squeezes space-time itself, ever so slightly changing the length of LIGO's arms. These changes are incredibly tiny, far less than the width of an atom. But with incredibly precise lasers and mirrors, LIGO can detect these minuscule distortions. The direct detection of gravitational waves opened a completely new window to the universe. We're now listening to the universe in a way we never could before, and confirming the speed of gravity was one of the most exciting aspects of that initial discovery. The absolute smoking gun arrived on August 17, 2017, with an event dubbed GW170817. This wasn't just any gravitational wave detection. For the very first time, gravitational waves from the merger of two neutron stars were detected by LIGO and Virgo. But the true magic happened moments later. Just 1.7 seconds after the gravitational wave signal reached Earth, a burst of gamma rays, a form of electromagnetic radiation, was detected by satellites like NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, originating from the exact same region of the sky. This was the universe giving us an undeniable answer. Both the gravitational waves and the gamma rays had traveled for approximately 130 million years across the cosmos from that distant neutron star merger. The fact that they arrived almost simultaneously within that incredibly narrow 1.7 second window after a journey spanning eons provided the most precise measurement ever. It conclusively showed that gravitational waves travel at the speed of light in a vacuum. Just as Einstein predicted, this single event, GW170817, gave us more insights than decades of other observations. It not only confirmed gravitational waves travel at the speed of light, but also ruled out many alternative theories of gravity. This monumental confirmation has profound implications. It solidifies Einstein's general theory of relativity as our most accurate description of gravity ruling out alternative theories that posited different speeds for gravitational propagation. It means that the universe operates under a strict cosmic speed limit, not just for light but for all information, including the very fabric of space-time itself. The measurement of gravity's speed isn't just a scientific curiosity, 
It's a cornerstone for our understanding of the universe. It underpins our models of black holes, the early universe and the grand cosmic dance of galaxies. And with advanced gravitational wave observatories on the horizon, we're just beginning to unlock the universe's most profound secrets, listening to cosmic symphonies we never even knew existed. So, the next time you see an apple fall, remember, it's not just a simple pull. It's the silent, incredibly precise response of that apple to the subtle curvature of space-time. A curvature that changes and propagates across the cosmos at the ultimate speed limit. The speed of light. What do you find most fascinating about the speed of gravity? Let me know in the comments below. And if you were intrigued by this cosmic journey and want to dive deeper into the mind-bending wonders of our universe, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. You won't want to miss our next exploration into the mysteries of space and time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.